Good morning, colleagues. Good, Good morning. morning. I think we need to start now. We're still waiting for the DG to finish her international commitments. I see she's here now. Then I think we should start our meeting. Um, I just want to check a lot of you colleagues you have been here since nine. Let me just confirm your attendance. It's Honorable Lanif Hussein, Honorable Mpumza, Honorable Hunevald, Honorable Kaiser. Honorable Brink, I think that's the colleagues that I can confirm you are here for now. Honorable Director is gonna be joining the meeting. Not so long, she was still busy attending to some constituency issues that were urgent. Let me recognize the, pres the, the presence of the both the Chairperson and the Deputy Chairperson of the National House of Traditional Leaders. I can see Inkosi Matlangu, you are here. Also. Morning, Chair. Yes. Morning, and morning, 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 I, want to, I want to also acknowledge the presence of the Deputy Chairperson. She's here as well. Then I want to also welcome our. CRL rights a commissioners. I see Commissioner Nomalanga is also here. Welcome, Commissioner. Then to acknowledge the presence, the Deputy Minister Wabella is said to be joining the meeting a bit late because he has to first to attend to his medical appointment. But I wonder who this object that is logged in here. Then I've seen a lot of uh, uh, Amakos. Uh, I've seen there's a lot of you. I think the deputy chair and the chairperson have mobilized. It's a lot of them in our midst. Uh, I want to welcome all of you, the leadership of the people. Then also to welcome uh, the DG of Traditional Affairs. I think we need the to, team, to start. We've got the sensible uh, number of members to with the team. continue with this uh, meeting. Then we need to then Can start with this you, meeting. Can I hand over to you, Dr. Swan? And go to I can see you. You are here by me. You're welcome. Dr. Swan. Mm, then I should think then we need to, to start the meeting. Like I DG. said earlier, we want to apologize, especially to uh, traditional Good afternoon, um, Chairperson, and yeah, good afternoon to the members once got again. Uh, Dr. Siswana is in the room. Cook. I don't know what's his challenge. Before we could start, start the meeting, thank you, Chair. And then she told me she was busy Dr. Siswana? Um, international engagement. Then I said, under the circumstances, then let me... But the continuous, continuous, my fellow colleagues. Is having some so there was a unanimous agreement that um, I agree this meeting can delay until the DG is ready. Okay, to Chairperson, I will continue with the presentation. We are here because to the provide an update that the DG at times to the Honorable Chair and the members the on the Community Works Program with a specific today. emphasis of focus on the so audit outcomes. The DG uh, has if to you, be in this meeting. And there was no way that one was going to start with the meeting. Chair, I need someone to move the slides. The, Unfortunately, I'm not in control of that. Can and we then move the, to the agenda next slide, please? for today will look as follows. Uh, Rufus was welcome you. controlling this from your office. Then, uh, where's Rufus? Person, the person controlling the, the slide the is the Cook will then one. present on the CWD. Okay. Can you move to the next what slide, please? What the is going to present on the city will be a... No, just move to the next slide, the please, Dr. Siswana. I've started the presentation. Including, uh, 
Okay, so in terms of uh, the background and analysis, Dr. Siswana had also gone through that. We informed this uh, just talking about the inception of the program, how it's differently so located, the, the, progress uh, the organizational stability, the goods and services issues, transfer model, negative outcomes, and also just a touch on the CWP model. If we can move to the next slide, we will talk about the summary of the findings from 15. Uh, from 2015, 16, and 16, 17. The, the findings actually indicate that we had an incomplete and inaccurate CW acid register, that reconciliations were not adequate same form, thing, procurement that is in our SCM process was not followed, project management system. fees were also then an issue in terms of how the tranches were being we paid. I mean, just the accruals and payables were not recognized as they were overstated. I mean, irregular expenditure. So if you look then at 2016-17, there was no evidence to actually support the report that we had tabled in terms of our achievements against targets. And there was also an amount that was disclosed as payable, but it was And there was an understatement of payables in the pool that weren't recognized and deficiencies in the asset register. If you move to 2017-18 and 18-19, next slide, Dr. Then the findings there is that apologies. we had underspending on the budget for the year. There was a majority uh, of indicators said, and PC targets PC that were not measurable, uh, uh, resulting in limitations yes. and reliability then of the Honorable testing Minister, of indicators and targets. An the personal numbers of deceased uh, people were day. on the, the uh, payroll, and there was non-compliance with the various ECM prescripts, so and there were differences in the training the and skilling of beneficiaries. Of the minister in 2018-19, there were issues of prepayments because being overstated in relation to the retention. Uh, the CWP UI so and no co that co we co co uh, payments sorry, were late, and then goods and services, the assets were not recorded then on the asset register, and then CWP participants look like uh, specifically around their controls on the participant data, the and this related the to the agenda. deceased uh, participants, to and participants were also found in person. and then just the whole project management fee issue once again as per the prior year. If we can move to the next slide, the what the next CRL slide then indicates so is the five uh, years, year on year audit outcomes. And you if you look at 2014 15, it was qualified, that, uh, these two subsequent years as qualified, and then the last two years, the uh, which is 2017 18 and 18 19, as disclaimers. And these Some root causes, if you move to the next slide on this, and was the poor governance and accountability of this within the department. Works program. Some manual processes that we were running, we have made an very poor record keeping, for the uh, last poor systems and reconfiguration, and little use of technology, and, and lack of attention to detail, Between and just also the whole human resource skill issue. And also how the we were designed, uh, the design was unstable, and we weren't getting accountability across, CWP you know, from the CFO role and function to back to the CWP, and just the whole model and fit. If we move, move to the next slide, we will then, and then uh, the talk to the audit outcomes for 2018-19, and, and, and just looking at some of the reoccurring Let findings that, have, for the that did emerge. For the of the so the root causes here that were not addressed with the deficiencies in the implementation implementation of the model, which resulted in the operational inefficiencies, and these contributed to the negative audit outcome for the program, lack of adequate record keeping as noted in previous years, and also just internal control processes were inadequate, and also lack of supervision, and the CW leadership itself was also unstable. Now, on these three items, Chair, on the first one, uh, we want to just note the progress uh, and that is that in the redesign of the, the, the model uh, to improve operational efficiencies, we have considered the model, we have had discussions at our executive uh, level, specifically in our EXCO, um, and we've had to go to the drawing, back to the drawing board on uh, two iterations, and we are in the process also of reviewing the systems and processes that will actually then support that, that model. On the adequate record keeping, this relates to document management and our standard operating procedures. 
What we've done here is that we've looked specifically at having a, a governance matrix that has been developed to actually monitor uh, our records on a monthly basis. And we've also then uh, specifically focused on expenditure uh, and we've had to also agree on what the progress is per, as per our business plan and what we've agreed to as being delivered. So the documents uh, themselves also, we've had to outline our procurement processes uh, and we've had to go to the detail of even looking at what are the invoices, what are the delivery notes, purchase orders and so on, just to ensure that we have the dil diligence that is required that would be deemed acceptable for an audit. And these are also then shared uh, in, in our monthly uh, meetings that we've been um, having around audit outcomes. Uh, sorry, weekly meetings, not monthly. And then we have uh, participants registers and records at site level. These are being updated. And uh, this is also as a result of us having monthly meetings with the NPOs uh, currently, just revisiting the service level agreements here and ensuring that uh, the requirements uh, are, are then meted by each of those NPOs. And we've also developed a checklist that actually supports us in getting that more accurate. Uh, just in terms of the instability, we've appointed our head, that's Dr. Siswana. We've also appointed a chief director, uh, Mr. Nyoka, to assist us then uh, just with the finance and the streamlining that is required between ourselves and uh, in CWP and the CFO office. We are also in process of making sure that all those functions are realigned and amalgamated for greater efficiency and effectiveness. If we can move to the next slide on the reoccurring findings that have also emerged. The first one being that there's also been a lack of attention to the requisite expertise within the finance department. Um, Chair, I hope the slides are moving on your side. So I just want to check with Excom. It's just a problem. On my yes. side, the slides are moving. If the slide could please be moved. Yeah, I think that we are on the 2018-19 audit outcome, recording findings. That's the yes, slide yes. that's on the screen. Yes, we that need to be on the slide. Not, not address the root cause. Slide seven of 35, that's where you are. That's correct, Chair. I should so. be on slide eight now. Mm, but the one that's here is slide seven of 35. Can we please move slide number eight? We might have lost Dr. Swana completely. Dr. Siswana, are you still in the room? We're on slide eight now. Okay, so in terms of slide eight, uh, just continuing, just continuing with the uh, recurring findings that have emerged. Uh, there's been a lack of attention or requisite expertise in finance. I've slightly touched on that. We also have since appointed a new CFO, uh, and our new CFO has started now on the 1st of November. We've also reviewed the capacity requirements, uh, and we are also confirming the ideal uh, organizational structure that we are needing. Uh, and of course, I also did speak about the chief director that's come on on a contract basis with NCWP. Uh, just with some, uh, there being no indication of corrective actions, the CWP management is implementing the IMT, which is our integrated management tool that we actually use to track all our audit outcomes uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, and that progress is actually brought to myself directly uh, on an ongoing basis. So also with regards to the lack of sense of urgency in implementing recommendations, the CWP management have prioritized all that needs to be implemented. And these are also being monitored and we are being given the assurance that is required by internal audit. If we can move to the next slide. This talks to the performance audit uh, findings that uh, also look at the root causes that were identified on planning and reporting. 
on the performance indicators uh, on our on the operational plan all the performance indicators were reviewed and updated uh, and these were considered uh, uh, based on the findings by the AG SA on the progress in relation to the performance targets it's not being mo monitored the CW management convenes their quarterly uh, review meetings and here is where they have a discussion in the MNR forum to monitor and implement the CW at site level. On the progress, reports from the NPOs that are not aligned to the deliverables in the service level agreement, we have created a checklist that is matched back to the service level agreement. And here we hold the, uh, the NPOs to account where we also then include the site uh, visits by our management so that we have the standardized template to validate and verify all the work that is being done by NPOs. If we can then move to the next slide. Uh, just with regards to the root causes identified in the CWP finance, uh, the NPOs reported financial performance based on budget figures different from the CWP budget allocations. Uh, some NPOs also had an overexpenditure on their budget for 2018-19, and some NPOs had also overspent on their PPE without obtaining approval from DCOG, and there was also expenditure that was incurred prior to the approval of spending. And then just with the absence um, uh, with regards to an inadequate portfolio of evidence to support expenditure that was incurred. So we've developed a reporting template, which has been aligned to the CWP budget allocation. So every month before any payments are made, we go back, we make sure that payments are aligned to, to the, uh, the budget schedule. And uh, we also then ensure that we provide feedback to NPOs and where there are gaps, these are, are then addressed. Uh, what we also do here, the CWP management has investigated the NPO's overspending and they've established that the reporting was not aligned to their own budget allocation. And of course, uh, this actually resulted in a misinterpretation around the over, uh, overspending. If we can then move to the next slide. Uh, and this is the root causes that were identified that relate to training. There was information and attendance register that were not uploaded. Training was not conducted uh, for some NPOs uh, and the underspending reasons uh, not provided on training. There was no approval uh, in terms of the operating procedure for training. Training documents were also not submitted with claims and there was also no site business plans and procurement plans were also not, not approved and the 5% retention rate was not retained. And the progress that has been made to date is that we now have a single portal which was created and a system that looks at the improve, improving and facilitating our access um, uh, in order for us to be able to address whatever issues we have uh, in, in, in particular on the attendance registers and also the training documents. We've also had the nine NPOs uh, conducting training in 2019 financial year and have spent, we've ensured that they've spent their training budget. We've also ensured that the training standard SOPs are reviewed and have been submitted for approval this year. The training checklist that were developed for the 1920 financial year are also aligned to ensure that all training conducted is accounted for. And then all sites are currently aligning their 2021 site business plans to the COVID-19 deliverables, including their procurement plans and training plans. Uh, then we also, on the uh, retention fees, we have withheld 5% for all payments made to NPOs to date. And, and all NPOs annual performance assessments are currently being conducted to determine the performance of the NPO. Uh, and that would also look at value for money. If we can then also move to the root cause on wages, that was just to do with accuracy and occurrence of a wage amounts, which could not be confirmed. So here, um, in the, we've had uh, some arrangements in the incident with SASA. We are currently, uh, monthly, we do a verification and we validate the participants against the SASA system. Uh, the finalization of in interface is currently still ongoing because you want to also finalize approvals and improve that whole process. In the medium term, the CWP has together with CETA are also developing a web-based information management system 
that will also enable these verifications and validations to, rem to remedy some of the findings. And the CW management has also prioritized the systems integration with other departments. So we've written letters to the DHA, to SASA, to PASL. We've also extended this uh, to CETA and to SARS. And we've also extended this, this um, request to the Department of Labor because we want to ensure that all these linkages will uh, make sure that we don't have double dipping or duplication of payments across the whole sphere of government. So in the long term, the CWP IMS um, is intended to have a full integration of systems, including the with the, the bank. Uh, and the bank, uh, including, sorry, having a link to BankServe, because here we want to ensure that all bank details do relate to that actual person who then receives the payment. And if there are any suspicious movements of funds, we can also be informed timelessly as a, pre a preventative measure. If you can move to the next slide on CWP wages continued, there were participants who were not registered for registered for COEDA, co I normally know it as that, and UIF. We've since engaged Department of Labor uh, on this. And uh, in that engagement, we've also then solicited the support so that we can assist the NPOs, at least those of those who are having challenges with their COVID, uh, COEDA assessments. And then on deceased, deceased participants on payroll and on the MIS system, We've also formalized uh, and identified the financial irregularities that have occurred. And then we will describe those fully in the next slide. Uh, and we've also then through the CWP MIS system, where it comes to parcel numbers and participants, uh, there's progress here with regards to the arrangements that we have with the DBSA. Uh, we do a monthly verification to make sure that uh, we are proactive in identifying those participants with parcel numbers. And then we've also, as I said, we've been in contact with DHA and CETA. If we can move to the next slide, just for us to be able to explain where we are at in relation to the uh, financial irregularities. The first uh, one was the uh, on the AGSA uh, report, there were parcel uh, participants who, who, who had then received uh, payments that were not due to them. This amount was at 4.7 million, just over. And to date, we have then cleared 2.2 million and we recruited 2.5 million. Now, what do we mean by cleared? We basically mean that we had gone in, investigated, checked, and confirmed that that value actually was due to those participants. Uh, with regards to the AGSA, the deceased participants, um, there was an amount identified of 581,000. We've since cleared the 479,000 and we've recouped, recouped the 101,000. So the total year was 5.2 million and it just we were just showing, indicating how this balance is back. With regards to the per personal participants, there was 7.1 million just over that. Um, and of course, we have cleared 1.2 and we've recouped 5.9 million. And the same with the deceased participants of 448,000. Uh, we've cleared 420 and we've recouped the 2,700 2, rand. So, in total, what was then identified by the uh, audit um, in relation to both the deceased and parcel participants was 7.6 billion and we've attended to the full 7.6 billion. The initially, if you also look, look at the cleared, it was really the area where NPOs were not able to provide uh, accept, an acceptable uh, portfolio of evidence uh, in relation to the information that we needed, but that has subsequently been resolved. If you then move to the next slide on the CWP assets, some root causes here uh, was that the asset verification reports, there were discrepancies here on the inventory list. Uh, we also had uh, discrepancies uh, around verification itself. So when you have to trace the asset from the floor to the asset register, uh, and if you also have to look at the major and minor assets, uh, which could not also be confirmed. Uh, and in addition to that, 
some assets were not barcoded and there was an inaccurate description as well on the assets and an incorrect classification around the assets. So there's a number of things that we have done in terms of progress to date. Uh, the annual asset verification process that normally takes place at the end of the financial year um, was then uh, looked at in line with what would be required in our an annual financial statement. The CWP asset verification was also planned in April. Uh, and of course, due to the required traveling at the time due to lockdown, we were not able to do this. So we were, had to then um, just review our assets through a desktop analysis and make sure that whatever the assets are uh, on the register, that all barcodes, et cetera, uh, were also contained within in those registers. And then uh, just in terms of the uh, appointment of the service provider, this was also suspended during the period, but we in the process of just reviewing our whole approach around the assets for this year. Uh, and then just with regards to the um, management uh, requested also the NPO to submit their required updated registers, uh, just to ensure that there's credibility on the information. And uh, we will then be conducting a physical verification uh, shortly. If we can then move to the next one. Next slide, please. Uh, this is also just to do with the root causes that have been identified on prepayments and the project management fees. Uh, here, it's related to the non-functional NPO payments. There was a, uh, the portfolio of evidences were not provided for expenses. Here, also the procurement that was made by NPOs was not in accordance with the SCM policy. Uh, we also found that there was no, um, sorry, my battery is dying. We also found that there was no evidence of unutilized funds by certain NPOs and NPO payments um, were also not in accordance with the payment supporting evidence. Uh, and then also there was no quarterly performance reports that were being provided as per the service level agreement. And we've also then had an issue just on the quarterly performance reports not being submitted and advances to nonprofit institutions were also not supported. And then we've had an overstatement on prepayments, project management fees and goods and services uh, when it comes to project management fees was not uh, being supported. So some of the progress that has been made to date uh, is that we have been able to then develop and implement a record management system. Uh, letters of non-compliance were then issued to NPOs uh, to ensure that they're accountable. We've also had one-on-one -on -one interaction with NPOs to ensure that there's further follow-up and areas identified or non-compliance have actually been explained. And we've also looked at the NPO annual performance assessments, and these are currently being conducted to, con to confirm performance by NPOs. And uh, the match is also referred to investigations for quantifying, validating accountability and transparency. And we've also then approved the PMF guidelines, uh, which is currently being aligned to our SLA uh, addendum for signing uh, once we've actually concluded that. We can move to the next slide, please. Uh, so with regards to the summary of our suspense accounts, uh, as you can see, we've got the 10 NPOs listed. We've had to look at the number of documents that they were due to actually have submitted to us. We had also looked at what was not resolved uh, and what it is that we have on hand. Uh, and of course, we are at a point where you can see where, which uh, NPOs we're still having uh, some challenges with. Uh, and what this in essence then means is that uh, where NPOs have not submitted documents or we were not able to resolve, uh, we've decided to actually recoup those funds uh, before we actually pay any next tranche payments to them. Okay, if we can then move to the next slide. Okay, so here, this is to do with the suspense account and its finalization. Historically, um, between 29 and 2020, we've had to ensure that we had direct uh, engagements with the NPOs. This deadline was set as of the 30th of November. I've alluded to that 
uh, in the previous slide and all outstanding amounts were deducted from the acute three payments and letters to this extent have also been issued to all NPOs. So currently in this current year, we continue then to look at the monthly reports uh, from, from the, the NPOs. Sorry, Chi, I don't know what's creating that sound now. Okay, so. Okay, so. DJ is still there. DJ is still there. DJ. Yes, Chip. Yes, Chairperson, I'm now here. Sorry, I had a bit of a downtime there. Okay, so on the current year, uh, Chairperson, we are looking at our monthly and report. Can Dr. Sanna mute his microphone because it's causing disruption? Oh, it's muted now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Chairperson. So uh, we are looking then at our monthly reports and quarterly reports, and we're making sure that we also have all the NPOs um, that are then then uh, 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 met with on a monthly basis to ensure that they are complying with what they need to comply with. Then if we go to the next uh, slide, what we are indicating here, some of the common themes that have come through with regards to the, the audit outcomes, and that's just inadequate management responses, poor post-audit plan implementation, non-optimization uh, of technology, poor financial management, uh, and then of course, continued skill shortage, which then results in an overall poor organizational culture. If you then go to the next slide, uh, so where to from here in the future of the CWP. So if you look at uh, all the processes, we are looking at a total review of our processes and we want to look at full automa automation Currently, we are, uh, we're looking at the two systems and we're looking at new systems and the portal that I spoke to earlier. And then from a governance perspective, we are just strengthening our reporting uh, and uh, we're also strengthening our uh, audits and internally, and we're also strengthening our areas of uh, accountability, uh, specifically with the NPOs. And of course, we want to remodel them for future sustainability. So if you move to the next slide on the CWP forensic investigations, next slide, please. Uh, on, on the forensic investigations that were commissioned by the department, uh, we had a number of investigations. And in these investigations, Chairperson, um, we firstly uh, had to look at the appointment and awarding of tenders to the implementing agents for the Community Works, Works Program, and that comes from the 2015 financial year, and chairperson had cited this number. And then uh, the second in forensic investigation uh, was also into the Community Works Program during 2016, 17, and 17, 18, and that cost us 7.4 uh, million. And then the third investigation uh, was on the community works program as a forensic investigation for 2019-20, and that cost was at 8.5 uh, million. So in total to date, uh, the, the department has just spent over 16 million on the forensic investigations. So the investigation into the appointment and awarding of tenders uh, to the implementing agents and procurement process of goods and services that have been procured by implementing agents. Uh, so the investigation mandate was that we had to investigate the procurement processes, for, uh, which then followed to select and award tenders to the implementing agents and the possible irregular expenditure which had incurred by the appointment of these implementing agents. So the recommendations here was that we are we, we're looking at a, the appointments and awarding of tenders, uh, the procurement processes and awarding of the tender. Is information missing? Okay. 
so here the investigation mandate was to perform a detailed analysis of the project management fees per the IA. And then we also had to review and analyze the payment batches and the identification of the illegal expenditure. We also had to look at the detailed review of the CWP MIS application system. Uh, and we also then had to look at and verify the completeness of the CWP asset register. If you go to the next forensic investigation, uh, at least the findings here of the 2017 investigation was that under asset management, um, where there was no clear definition as to what would constitute an asset, the department would then, uh, would, the recommendation was that the department needed to actually consider developing an asset management policy, conducting that physical verification of the assets, documenting those assets, and ensuring that we identify the location of the assets and make sure that we safeguard and conduct a proper evaluation on those. So the project is also still underway to attend to all asset related um, matters as uh, described earlier. And both the CFO and the CWP management are putting in place the mechanisms to also ensure that all assets are accounted, recorded and classified. And the expected outcome is a credible asset register. Okay, so in terms of processing of payments, the recommendation here was that CWP should exercise stricter control on the verification and validation of the PM claims and ensure that all IAs comply with the SLA requirements. So we did develop the checklist as I had spoken to earlier. And then just with regards to the MIS system, uh, management it was recommended that management should investigate uh, the internal options for the automation of the balancing and reconciling functions for the salary payments. Uh, and that the current manual processes and reliance upon human inspection of data also be reviewed uh, and that we also build in a quality assurance because of the volumes of all the financial entries. And the MIS system should also be interfaced with home affairs uh, for further verification of participants. So the status here is that uh, with CETA in partnership with them, uh, the CWP is currently working on a project to enhance the MIS system to ensure that we also have effective controls on that system. So the recommendations on the um, second investigation uh, was that the CWP model in terms of its nature uh, and how it is implemented through, through IAs, the delays of the processes of payments, uh, allegations of fraudulent activities and the project management fees. So the action here is that we've dealt with all with all uh, financial years, and we've also looked at the policy and systemic issues. Uh, and these also reside within our remodeling project, which has a number of streams that would look at each of the is issues. On the forensic investigation uh, report for 2019. Uh, the investigation mandate here was arising from the, the AG's material irregularities that were raised in 1819, and the department uh, commissioned a legal forensic investigation on all issues uh, that were directly or indirectly linked to the material irregularities in respect of the CWP. And these were the areas of material irregularity that was to do with the payment to deceased participants, payment to personal participants, PM fees not supported for that period for 2014 to 18, and then the PM fees not supported for 2018 19. It should actually be 2019 20. Yeah. Okay, so then on the forensic investigation, this third one findings were the overpayment on project uh, management fees and then undue VAT benefits. Uh, and then also prepayments that were not supported by evidence. So here, a total of 39 million just over was paid to the cited NPOs, for amongst others, overpayments on project management fees and undue VAT benefits and prepayments unsupported uh, by evidence, uh, which needed to then uh, be recovered. So we are in process of ensuring recovery uh, of all the funds 
and we also will be in process of, of okay, I'll explain that a little later, of what we are doing with regards to VAT and our engagements with SARS, and also then just with payments that have not been supported. Uh, on consequence management, to actually then uh, look at this total uh, figure, uh, we have since started the disciplinary process, we have suspended a number of officials sitting in the CWP area, uh, and we are in process of issuing. Um, we are in the process of issuing disciplinary notices, and of course, uh, the reasons for the disciplinary action relate to them uh, to the failure on their part uh, to actually ensure that they manage the financial system within the CWP, ensure that there were controls. To, and that they also needed to prevent the fruitless and wasteful expenditure, and then also just uh, failure on their part to have withheld any retention fees as per the requirement of the service level agreement. Uh, and then just with regards to the payment to deceased participants, I've covered that in slide nine, and also the parcel participants were covered in slide nine, if you go, go on. And then just on the VAT issue, um, DCOG uh, must report this irregularity to SARS, as I've also mentioned earlier. Uh, we are in process of also doing that. So on the irregularity on the appointment of NPOs, uh, the progress so far is that the Auditor General uh, and the High Court pronounce on the matter. However, on the latter, the process is suspended until the 31st of March, 2021. So it's recommended that the portfolio notes our progress report on the audit findings. Thank you, Chairperson. Okay. Thank you so much. Colleagues, can I see a show of hands as to who wants to interact with this presentation. Can you remove the presentation on the screen, please, so that I must be able to see the members. If the presentation can be removed from the screen, that will assist the greatly, please. DG? DG? Sorry, it is being removed, Chairperson. Thank you. Apologies for that. I'm looking at my speakers list. There's no one. Maybe the colleagues want to show their, their faces. I've seen Mam Kize. She's the first one. I'm the same chair. And then Hussein. Uh, Kleiser. Kalipi, I can't show my okay. face, Chair. I'm on the road. I see you're a busy machine. Um, I'm in your province, Chair. I was expecting you. In my province. You didn't invite yeah. me. <laughs> I'm just a few space. I would have come and joined you. So is it uh, four of you only? I, I have a Kawa. Hussein, Keza, and Mkalipis, only the AIC, Honorable Kronevalt. Shall I note you or not? Should be the four of you for now. Uh, oh, yes, I will allow the Deputy Chairperson as well of the National House to ask questions. Yeah. Yes, She's, your hand is up as well. Just raise your hand on the platform. Yes, let's follow that order. Can I start with Honorable uh, Kaba? Thank you, Chair. Thank you for the presentation, Chairperson. <clears throat> I, Chairperson, I have just one question in this presentation. My question, Chair, is on the CWP. I can see here there is a CWP that owned by one of the NPO. 
who get money, the total amount of 39,714,864, 20 rand or 20 cent, I don't know, paid to the cited NPO. Chairperson, it is very difficult for us as members to talk one thing from where you were, where we, we were coming here in this parliament, we are swearing in, in this parliament about this CWP. If this CWP is a serious job or is a serious to help our, uh, our people in the community, why they are not being absorbed, even if they will get 500 rand per month, is fine, but not to be under some certain people in the NPOs. Because these NPOs are robbing our people. I think this issue uh, of these NPOs or of CWP, they must go to Zondo Commission so that they maybe the Zondo Commission can verify how much they get and how much they give our people. It's not good to play about people. You see, sometimes to take a person, say, because I'm giving you money, come in and work for me, I'll give what I have. It's not good. These are the human being like us, like any else. My question is that why still the, 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 the CWP people under the NPOs, the NPOs that you don't know who is who, who owns these uh, 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 NPOs? Because you can see mm -mm, they don't want to take them away and put our people even if they get a small amount, but it's fine if they have uh, they what you call it, the pay slip. They are having a, a, a UIF. They are paying UIF even with those cents that they have, so that when the, this uh, work is out, is is if they are out of job, they can go and claim their UIF. UIF. But this thing is not good. It's making our people to be slavery. Why can't we? talk this issue and be heard what we are saying. Because we are saying this because we are, we are in the community, we see the way they suffer, these people who are in under this NPO. This NPO, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are driving big cars. Why did these people, they are not even afford to buy, to, to put their children in the, in the, in the, in the private schools? In the and not in the to, to buy their children in their shoes, even if they are going to the uh, government schools. Chairperson Mina, I'm, I'm, I'm so disappointed about this uh, uh, CWP and these NPOs. We said we will change as government, we will change the lives of the people, we'll give them the better life. Is this a better life, Comrade Chair, uh, uh, Honorable Chairperson? I don't think it's a better life. I know women and, 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 and men who are working under these NPOs in, the, in this CWP. I know them. They can't afford to buy their children shoes to go to the schools. Why did these NPOs they drive big cars and they put their children in the, uh, um, in the private schools? I'm so disappointed. We are not helping our people about this uh, CWP. If we want to help them, they, we must put, we, we must insource them, not to put them under, to, to, to outsource them to the NPO that we don't know who own that NPO. Thank you, Chairperson. Yeah, level her mom keys. I can't. Can I hand it over to Honorable Lucent? Yeah, uh, Chair, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Uh, oh. Can it be unmute? Thanks. 
Honorable Houston? Yeah. Is, uh, we, we had the you are too far away. Very far away. Can the DG mute a microphone, please, so that you can hear Honorable Houston? Honorable Houston, it's either the volume of your gadget or something. Is it better now? Yes. Then okay. You are audible. Yeah, no, I think it was my it was uh, my device. I mm -hmm. I was saying, Chair, I, I'm glad that we've had an opportunity to interact on this program. It's a it's an area I think that was of concern for for us as a portfolio committee for quite a long time, um, and I think all of us, uh, including myself, have um, often spoke out against uh, the way the program is managed. Uh, the high levels of fraud and corruption and irregular expenditure. I want to just reflect on your opening statement, Chairperson, and the actual amounts of money that we spent on this program over the seven years, which is a 17 billion rand. And that on its own must give us a bit of an indication of the massive investment that was made in the CWP program. But to date, uh, neither the minister nor the DG or any senior official from the department can tell us what we got for 17 billion. Nobody could tell you. I, I appreciate the honesty of the minister in our last interaction on the CWP program. And she was quite open and transparent about what her thoughts are um, at that time. But up until today, none of us can tell South Africans what we did with their 17 billion rand. And I want to ask the, the, the DG, whether or not she's planning to do any cost-benefit analysis on the CWP program um, so that at least there could be some proper uh, report back to the people of South Africa to say, this is how we spent your 17 billion rand. But nobody can tell us up until today. What we know is that dead people were getting paid. Uh, what we know is that there are government employees that were getting paid. I'm glad to see that there's been some recovery of that money, but I, I'm not impressed with the uh, uh, with with the percentage of recovery, especially the uh, um, those who are employed by the state. Um, we should have by now reco recovered all of the money, especially if they're employed by the state. I can see no reason why we why they have not recovered that money, and I want to get an answer from that, please. But just on that issue, why is it taking so long to recover the money from employees who are currently employed by the state. You could have done that in 30 days. Take your whole salary if you have to. So if you can just, the DG must just give us some feedback on when can we expect that money to be paid back. But notwithstanding that, there has to be consequences for those staff who have been receiving that money because they shouldn't have been in the first place. And there doesn't appear to be any report on what consequences there have been for those government employees who have been benefiting out of the CWP program. Um, there's nothing in the report, and the DG must please give us some feedback on what action is going to be taken against them. When I listen to the whole program and I go through all of the slides, the one common thread that I pick up, and this is a problem across all of our departments, is this issue around consequences for people when they do wrong. And you can see that there's nobody in that report. No one is sitting in jail at the moment. We spent 17 billion rand. There's hundreds of millions of rands of irregular expenditure, fraud and corruption. Nobody's sitting in jail. And I want to hear more information from the DG on exactly what is it that DCOC is doing to hold people accountable. I'm, fine. I'm, I'm satisfied that they, they're trying to take some corrective measures to prevent uh, you know, a recurrence of what the Auditor General has picked up. But that's not good enough. That only stops the problem from recurring. What it doesn't do is hold the people accountable who stole the public's money. And, I, I, and it surprises me and it disappoints me that that is not a priority for the department. When you have a culture like that, that has instilled itself in the, in the department, this is why people do as they please and they get away with it. So I, I want you, DG, to please address us on how important this matter is for you. As the head of this department, what are you going to do to make sure that those people who have stolen the public's money are going to be held accountable because your report does not include anything of that. You've talked about the progress report uh, um, on the forensic investigations. And I think the, the only thing I saw there was about six officials that were suspended. Uh, that can't be that, uh, that that covers the entire 
problems over seven years. So I'd like to hear your your response on that, um, uh, please. Then, Chairperson, I'd like to hear also um, whether any investigation has been done on uh, uh, um, family members of officials in DCOC who are, were running those NPOs. We've picked up quite a bit of information and perhaps there are rumors, and, um, but we know of uh, some cases where staff members or their, their, member, or their family members were running the NPOs and they were using it as an opportunity uh, uh, you know, to use their family members to run NPOs and get money in return. So has there been any investigation in that? And if so, how many of uh, uh, the staff at DCOC had family members running NPOs or benefiting out of this? I see there was an overpayment by 39 million rand paid to NPOs. How do you how do you get to that stage? And what exactly had transpired there? How did you end up paying 39 million rand more than what was expected? Um, and who is going to be held accountable for that? That part of the of the um, of the report has been missing. You merely just say that you've overpaid 39 million rand to NPOs. Chair, the last point that I want to raise uh, is yet another disappointment. Notwithstanding all of the irregular expenditure, the fraud and the corruption in the, prog in the program, spending 17 billion rand, not having anything to show for it. Now we've done forensic investigations and that costs us another further 16 million rand. That just boggles the mind. And if you, you know, we allow a situation like this to fester over a period of or over years. People have been complaining for years now about the CWP program. Uh, there are CWP workers all over in the country, but nobody knows who they are. We don't even know what they do. Just in Durban alone, we know there's quite a few of them, but we don't see them. We don't know what they're doing. The ward councillors don't even know who they are. Many of them are collecting money and sitting at home as well. And so this 16 million rand that we spent now is money down the drain. It's not going to assist anybody for, for service, service delivery, especially in the environment and the context in which we are operating when municipalities come before us. And they talk about the lack of funds that they have to be able to provide um, you know, proper service delivery. Yesterday, we had a conversation um, in the House about, um, about the CRL Commission and how they are struggling to even you know, have more money to invest in, in social cohesion. We pay them 48 million rand. And yet you have billions of rands that are, you know, people are now starting to siphon off for themselves. Something is wrong with that picture, Chairperson when there's so many hundreds of millions of rands that are being siphoned off and we are unable to make a greater investment in commissions like that that can really help us to benefit uh, the future of, of the country and bring communities together. This CWP program, as far as I'm concerned, is a waste of time. It should be shut down and not remodeled. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Houston. Can I hand over to Honorable Kaiser? Honorable Tazer. Honorable Tazer. Can I? No, pass thank you very much, Chairperson. Oh, okay. uh, look, uh, I. Maybe if you switch off the video, it will be better. Uh, Unmute your microphone. Sure. And the first thing that occurs in my day is the, 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 the program. Yes, can you hear me, Chair? Can you hear me now? Uh, maybe. Yes, start, start from the scratch. Yes, I okay, can hear you, you now. You must start from the scratch. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, sure. The first thing, I, we read, we read the, 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 the presentation, Chair, and the first thing that occurs to one's mind is that the, the, the program is plugged with uh, corruption. And uh, we, have, we have submitted here in the, in the committee that... Uh, the tendering system, uh, if this is not a proof of the, of the manner in which the, the tendering system seeks to benefit one particular person or one particular NPO to the detriment of the participants, then there would never be anything else that, 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 that proves to, to that. Uh, 
you know, chairperson, there, there's officials here of, of government who are, who are charged with 21 irregular, irregular tenders. And there is a, a lot of a connections a, of one person that is a, a, a member of a trustee and a non-executive of another water board and then he she becomes a, 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 a accused of 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 fronting for 30 million and then you you find the same person establishing a parallel uh, a npo to to defy the findings and then uh, you've got ubuntu sima uh, then she becomes a director general director there and Oh, Chairperson, this is this is really, and my worry is that if this this program has not reached the Honourable Leza, I'm badly we're battling to hear you. If you can get a better connection, yeah. colleagues, can you hear Honourable Leza, or it's only myself? Yes. What is this? this? Uh -uh. Can you hear me now, Chairperson? Yes. Are you changing gadgets? No, I'm not changing gadgets. I've been connected to one gadget all the, all the time. It's just that here, they, the, the, the network goes and it comes back. Uh, you look a, like you're in Cape Town with your background. Yes. Now oh. the background is Cape Town, but I might not be in Cape Town. <laughs> <laughs> Can I continue? Yes. No, chairperson. So, so, so it begs the question that uh, what is the department going to do to prevent um, the the continuation of these patterns of of outsourcing the 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 functions and duties that the state is supposed to to be delivering um, on its own to NPOs that are actually corrupted and they are politically connected. And hence you find resistance, even to the extent of people who have been found guilty. So what is the department going to do to prevent that situation before the, the program itself is extended to rural communities? Because uh, what you see, what that, what that attitude says, uh, it says that uh, I, I, I am entitled to, to these things. I belong to a certain organization. So this organization has won elections and then I am entitled to these things. I'm not going to, to back off. I'm going to uh, uh, forge on and benefit on my own and benefit on my own, whether I'm doing, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm establishing new companies that have to get there uh, to, make, to make me survive to, to over the participants themselves. The second question pertains to the, whether the, I think it's on slide 14 somewhere, where the, 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 uh, uh, the DG has, has she, she has said that there is a, uh, they have consulted with the NPOs. I'm not sure where, but I wrote it here. Uh, have the DG or the department consulted the participants themselves who are complaining of many issues pertaining to their livelihood and the manner in which this program can be uh, turned around for the better? Because it might have had uh, uh, good intentions in the beginning, but right now uh, things have changed economical, economical. Uh, 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 many issues have to be uh, uh, addressed pertaining to, to the livelihood of them. Have they actually uh, uh, met with the, with the participants? Because I don't get the sense that uh, uh, the, there is meeting of, of the participants themselves in terms of because when you are, when we are, I, I, my assumption is that when you are, when we are um, um, creating a new model, 
all stakeholders should be consulted. And I, I, I didn't get that in the presentation, Chair. And uh, the, the, the other question relates to Chairperson, uh, uh, what, as to when the, the current contracts of these NPOs are coming to an end. And also whether the, the Gauteng CWP is under administration. And if it's under administration, how, how, how did the department just pick up that one and not go through? Because this, this program is corrupted everywhere across all provinces. So how do, how do they, can they explain that one? That one? How do they, maybe, maybe I need clarity. Uh, I can put it like that. It's a clarity seeking question. Um, well, Chairperson, uh, there's a slide where they talk about uh, 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 um, uh, 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 the companies uh, that were that were found, but 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 they don't list them because a, an example has to be set in society for people that are. Are actually transgressing and 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 and, and misusing and mismanaging the, the 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 finances of of the people. An example has to be set. There has to be a minimum sentence for those who are defrauding the state. There has to be minimum sentences for those who are defrauding the state and the and the and the MPOs themselves who are defrauding the states, the public funds. They must then. Uh, be held to account. Uh, uh, the, the, the MPOs themselves must be barred from doing business and, and be blacklisted and be barred from doing business with the state and to have been uh, 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 do, doing wrong. They must be barred. And I don't get the sense that uh, these MPOs have been actually barred. How are they going to move on as Cocta? How are they going to move on uh, with the same NPOs that have been found to be uh, uh, defrauding the state? Uh, I don't get that sense because an example has to be set here. And then there's, a, there, there's, a, there's issues pertaining to its foundation and Beula Africa NPO, it gets, it gets, it gets, it gets out, of, out of the box. With no, with with a zero previous experience, no experience of uh, uh, is it is it the precedent that 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 the the, the program has set to say that uh, uh, even people who have no track record can 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 come to to the fore, uh, uh, and what uh, is the is the department's uh, position on that one? Uh, I think that sums up my. Uh, my, my submissions, Chair. Uh, Thank you so much, Honorable Keza. Can I hand over to Honorable Mukalipi, who will be followed by Honorable Direko? Mukalipi? Honorable Mukalipi? Honorable Mukalipi, can I pass to the record? Honorable uh, Direko? Thank, thank you, Chair. Chair, in this program, uh, I've looked at the presentation and my worry is that uh, it speaks about all the challenges, but it doesn't give us a solution to say, what is it that is going to be done to this program? How are they going to address those challenges in future so that they don't happen again? Because when you look at the challenges that we have as the country and also in the Department of Service Delivery, they need a lot of money. However, uh, there's a lot of money that have been spent in this program. So I just want to check with the DG. Uh, is, does she really think that the money that have been spent is a uh, value for money? And then uh, secondly, Chair, it's on the presentation on its own. Uh, I don't know if it's myself or what. It's inaccurate. Even then, the, 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 the amount of money they, they are not telling 
in this presentation. And the other issue is that this presentation is not what we've expected from the department. Uh, when we were raising the issue of CWP and the issues that were raised by the Auditor General, we requested that we get a detailed information of the whole process. We need to get the names of all the NPO, NPOs that have been contracted, the board of directors of those NPOs, the contract of those NPOs, so that we can know how much is a, each NPO is contracted for and how much is the commission of each and every NPO. And also on the issues that have been raised by Auditor General, who are those NPOs that have been affected by the process, by the uh, issues that have been raised by Auditor General? Who are these NPOs that have paid the, the deceased? Who are these NPOs that have paid the people on, uh, on, on PESA? And also, do the department have a screening process of the uh, people that are appointed on CWP program. So those are the uh, issues that I, uh, I wanted to raise and uh, share. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I await Honorable Mukalepi. Can I hand over to the Deputy Chair of the National House of Traditional Leaders? Thank you, Chairperson. Honorable members, uh, uh, chairperson of the National House of Traditional Leaders, the entire uh, traditional leadership. Uh, thank you, Chair. I must first applaud this uh, 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 committee for getting to the roots of, of, of this SWP. Chair, as I'm a cause, we I think your network is a challenge. It was can about you, CWP. Can, oh, that's uh, for time. several. There are amongst. Uh, that we don't even know those. Can you hear me? Can you, yes, hear, I can hear you now properly? You're audible now. Yes, chair. I, I, I was saying there we. Uh, we are raising a, a concern as traditional leaders that as much as these people are working around uh, in, in our areas, but we don't even know their bosses, those NPOs. We, we were not informed. And the issue which was raised, the honorable member, of exploitation of our people, the money, the, what is being paid to them, I, I, I was even saying when Amakos were complaining that sometimes you find them sleeping. If I was not a leader, I was going to say, no, they can sleep as much as they, uh, they can because they are exploited. But I couldn't say that as a leader. When the president uh, asked us uh, as traditional leaders to lead agrarian revolution, which with a main focus of food production and a job creation, especially for youth. We got excited because CWP was going to partner with us when we are talking about deep pushing, a fencing of our, of our, our plowing fields. But unfortunately, when we, we, we were about to start, we were told that they have already contracted a uh, those people, we got we got amazed because we wanted to, to to be part of the process. And when we're listening to them, the, the, those uh, millions, and you can see even uh, from the report that uh, I can say one uh, uh, NPO has been paid uh, uh, money which even exceeds the budget of the National House of Traditional Leaders. But the money you can't you, you can't see the, 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 the results, but it's money is there. I'm also we even raised the issue of uh, uh, absorbing those people to the de department so that they cannot be kept on changing better. Uh, they must have at least a fixed salary. We raised those issues. And we were also concerned that, especially those people, they are most of them, they are women. Some, most of them, they are uh, uh, breadwinners, but that was not taken, in, uh, taken into any uh, consideration. 
But uh, I think now you are you are coming uh, exactly to what we have been raising as a course, and I'm I'm comfortable now that we'll be talking about this because we can't have a imalengaka and and especially this is the department which is supposed to be looking at the rural people, the rural masses, but evolve exploitation of our people. I will form a baba protect higher band. Thank you very much, Chair. Back. I want to check what the Mkalipi is back. Honorable Mkalipi. She's still traveling. Okay. I think then I need to deal with the following issues. Mrs. Hand is Oh, okay. In the visit, then come in. I just see a picture. Hey, I Ah. No, I just, I just, I just, I just wanted to say to you, eh, would there be any harm if, as traditional leaders, we were roped into this whole thing? Because I once said in a meeting that we had with some of the members of CWP, the officials there, that uh, occasionally when I get to my office, I've got to jump over these people because they are sleeping on the on the end. Mm -hmm. And I thought maybe if, if we're involved in this thing, we would be showing them what to do at times, because most of the time they're just there looking there. And I also support Koska um, Zimklavli when she says there's no harm in them sleeping because they are being paid peanuts. Is it not possible maybe to say uh, in the traditional areas, we should be the people who are employing these people and then you, uh, the, the, the department, which has to do with uh, CWP, uh, sends the money to traditional leaders because I think we can manage it better there. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Nda visit. I think it's a very fair proposal that is there. Then, DJ, I want you to talk to us on slide 13 of the presenter that we have also raised with your predecessor prior to you joining the department. The issue around assets. DDG Temba 4C is on record with this committee saying that they are going to appoint a service provider to verify assets across the country. And then this has been told, said to us earlier in February this year. So I want you to tell us the status of that project. How far are you? Because if that is a project, you could have uh, by now gone far because you are able to tell us now. You must give us a brief. What is the value of the assets on the ground? vis-a-vis -vis the appointment of the service provider to do the job. Somewhere, somehow in between, we learned that when you came in as an accounting officer, you suspended this, 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 this project. And this is a project that is very key, if we are serious, in terms of the value of the project, given the monies. Earlier when I started, I started to say, since the inception of the project, do you think if that is the decision that you have taken to cancel the contract to verify the asset was it a good uh, leadership decision? If not, maybe that's why initially when Honorable uh, Hussein tell us to say that is what is your strategy and objective on this uh, on this project. We couldn't hear you saying anything, but I think now it's time that you need to tell us because you need to tell us what's happening on the asset management project because this is what the AG since time in memorial has been raising on these matters. The other issue that I wanted you to talk to us, the report is silent on the five forensic investigation. Even if you are doing that, you are just brushing them aside. We want specific details on this ones, on the five forensic investigation. You will talk to forensic investigation number one report what were the findings? Name the officials who were fingered in the report and what consequence management have you followed as an accounting officer? We want you to deal with this from 
report one up to report five. And then I think it's high time you can also finish the, uh, the committee with the copies of those reports. And then you must also then share with us how much did you spend for each report thus far? And in terms of the findings, what value did the investigator found that was lost? And then also to mention, these are the names of the officials. We know some of them are still there. And then what are the consequence management that you have taken? That's what we wanted you to brief us on this matters as far as the, 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 the forensic report. And then the other issue, that I raised earlier, the expenditure over the last seven financial year, we said it amounted to 15.5 billion. But yourself, as you're reporting, you mentioned something like a, something like 7.6 billion. Maybe you must then quantify which financial year are you referring to, the 7.6 uh, billion. And then the other issue then with regard to the issues that they've raised by the record, this is what we wanted to know. For all these years, these are the service provider. And so to see a spreadsheet since the inception, these are the service provider that has been appointed, the agent, what has been the experience as the other members have been raising. Because I should think it's our responsibility to start to demand transparency on this program. So we'll hand over to you, DG, to respond. And then if there are follow-up questions, depending on how you respond to these matters, the colleagues will follow up. Okay, thank you, uh, Chairperson. Uh, I thought a good way for us to, to respond to all the questions, I'd ask Dr. Siswana to start, and then I would then wrap up, Chairperson, on what would not be responded to. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chair and the uh, committee. Uh, let me start uh, with the issue of the, uh, um, uh, what was raised uh, about the NPOs and uh, their inability to do the work. And uh, the demand is given to them and the question was asked by one the member why we still have uh, NPOs. <coughs> I think the issue of the NPOs, uh, when you when and the appointment and the, the amounts uh, that have been investigated in one of the investigation here, we, we can we can we can openly say to members of the parliament of this committee that indeed um, the there are discrepancies around the NPOs including the investigation. But let me say, Chair, that uh, the, that matter of uh, verifying or looking at exact amounts uh, that for the investigation, we, that has been completed, uh, just has been completed. We, 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 ha we have engaged with some, but uh, for, for now, Chair, with your permission, we might not uh, get to that detail because there are some further uh, angles where the investigators and the companies that they are looking at. And I suggest uh, when it comes to this one and congee with the member with the member that there are indeed, if I may classify as elements of uh, bad governance, but uh, those matters once they are completed and all the, the angles where it is showing. Uh, are also, those, those areas are completed. It will be duty of the department to come back to the committee and give properties exactly on the NPOs and their, in, 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 and their elements of bad governance when it comes to the finances of, of CWP. The issue again around the NPOs uh, of the, the contract. The contract it, it comes, an end, it comes to, uh, to an end next year, 2021, 31st of March. But I think it's critical again, very important for the department 
to look at, to, to, to also again provide that cost benefit analysis that owner member raised earlier on, because it will be fair, not only, not, not only for the department, for the general public to understand the details and know what actually happened to this program from its inception to date and the impact that it has made to the lives of the people. But not only that, but what amount has been, has been wasted in the process. The, the human element of it, in that cost of benefit analysis will be also, also very critical, whether there was any manipulation of the system. Hence, the, the discussion about the remodeling is, is quite very important. So, so I, 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 I fully agree with the issue of cost benefit analysis that the owner member raised, but to look at all the angles of that cost benefit analysis so that we can bring this matter into it's a, so that there's a full understanding of what actually happened here and the amounts that have been spent on this program since its inception. The, the recovery, the recovery of the amounts or money that have been uh, wasted or maybe defrauded, whatever form, it has to it has to be done. Hence, I indicated earlier on that uh, there are currently currently there are discussions around that matter. In the slides, you you, you there's a slide talks to the vet issues, talks to a number of issues. These are the discussions that we are having. But once that, uh, with the permission chair, that is done without compromising other elements of criminality in the process, we'll come back to the committee and, 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 and give details of that. Indeed, there are areas where you can see a red flag. Therefore, the money has to be recovered, whether from individuals or from the, the relevant or, or, or maybe the, the critical in, uh, individuals or companies. But it has to be recovered. Hence, we started with the, with the recovery from the NPOs on the, per, on the person and deceased. But that's not enough, I, I agree. But you have to go beyond that and look at the is, other issues of the project management fee. And, and that it becomes so critical because that's, the, that's the, the bulk of the money that moves between the department and the NPOs. And let me say it is that area that in the last investigation, that, that, that was the focus. And currently there are discussions around that area so that we can be able to deal with it across the board. The, I, I also agree that there are instances where the program has paid the deceased person. But the point I want to put across around this matter, it, the, the paying a deceased and person and, every, and, 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 and all those people, it's, a, it's just a, an after effect. The issue that is critical throughout all this investigation and that discussion that we had in the previous months that have been here is that where does it start? Who is loading the, the disease? Who, who, pay, who who's loading them? Um, who, why the, the continuous um, emergence of the disease? Uh, somewhere they are de deactivated and they emerge later uh, around even including the, the issue of the, of, I'm um, also including the issue of the PESA. So that investigation is also a critical and outcome of which is very important. But let me say one, one area before I move to the next point. There is an instant, there is an uh, instant, uh, um, maybe an area that we are currently looking at. Again, on this matter of the disease and person around the issue of the manipulation of the system. 
and these areas are of uh, importance for 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 the department and 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 also for the members of parliament and the public in general so we we we, we are also focusing on, on on those areas so that to, at the end of the day we we, are, we understand two things not only the amount but also where does this thing um, originate? Where does, um, who is the, ordinate, uh, the originator? Who is the manipulator of the system? The, the, the second area that is uh, also the, uh, raised by um, honorable, um, honorable member is that uh, the issue of accountability and consequence management. I think that matter is highlighted in, in, in the investigation. Uh, that um, six officials have been suspended. But we are in agreement with the member that it doesn't stop there. We should move beyond the, the officials and, and also look at outside the department. Again, on the chair and, and members, the, 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 the latest report, we are looking at it including that area because there are also red flags there. The, I think the, the, the amount uh, that has been given here, total amount of uh, 39 million with regard to overpayment of project management fee, undue vet benefit, prepayments, unsupported, and everything. This matter, uh, Chen and, and, and uh, honorable members, it's a matter that uh, we immediately when the, this investigation started and, and completed on, on around this area, we, we had a discussion the uh, past few weeks with the relevant company that is involved in this investigation. We are indeed uh, looking at it in a, in a, with, the, with, the, with the purpose of recovery. And that recovered the plan between them and us, them as the company, that it will be finalized and shared with the relevant bodies. If it needs that we have to engage with the South African Revenue Service, we will have to do that. But that, that engagement is more advanced. The, because it, it becomes important, if we do that, it will be important to understand what has been happening since its, its inception to date. The other area that um, one member raised, uh, I think uh, honorable member um, uh, said that the, the issue around the, the, the general corruption or the general uh, corruption in the system uh, is important to understand or know the trustees um, board members and um, the families were involved. I think that information uh, can be provided um, because it is information that we can we can we can we can we can provide to the portfolio committee when the, when the, that time is is uh, uh, when the time is that to do so or where, when we are called to do so. Um, that information because it is uh, information that also the the investigators were also looking at in terms of the conflict of interest um the other area which is uh, on the a cwp member cwp uh, participants who are, uh, they have their presence in rural areas. I think it, it's, 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 we can admit and say there is pre presence of uh, CWP participants across the country, but not in all wards. And that's a matter that we, we discuss and say it's important that uh, our participants, they are all over. But what becomes important, not because they're just, they are just uh, becoming uh, all over the, the country, what becomes important is the, what is it that they are doing across the country? 
that, 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 that's, that's more important. Hence the discussion within the, re, the, the remodeling, they take the, the angle of uh, making sure that the, the, the participants at the end of the day are more skillful in order to be in, in charge of their own communities, not just go around and cut grasses and everything else, but be very, very um, skillful in order to make also, to make sure that they contribute to the economy of the country. And so the focus will be on the skills development and making sure that some of the participants, if not all, yeah, they become artisans and become active in the economy. Because in some instances, these reports do come that uh, some participants, they are, they are not uh, used uh, optimally. The, um, the other area that uh, I also want to, to, um, to refer to is the area of the, of the, of the uh, Gauteng. The question was whether the Gauteng is under administration. Let me also maybe indicate one thing, that within the, 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 the service level agreement and the transfer agreement that we have with the NPOs, more especially on the latter, the transfer agreement, it says that uh, it, if the department identifies any element of uh, maladministration or corruption, you, will you have to immediate, immediately suspend the, the NPO. So what happened in Gauteng is that uh, the, we identify some, ele some elements of corruption and, and maladministration. We suspended the NPO called Iketzeze. So Iketzeze now is managed in terms of the policy, is sort of a caretaker by a, a, an NPO called Itemalik. So because we have to find, to get to the bottom of what actually happened is there within Iketzeze. So the matter is still under investigation. I, I, I fully agree with the member who raised the issue of uh, defrauding the state that uh, people or contract or, or people or NPOs must be held accountable. Uh, and then, and then there, were, there, were, there were also um, NPOs that were named in Tembe which I alluded to, and out of the box. So these three NPOs, they're all suspended. Whether, whether the, 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 the screening at that point in time in terms of skills was done or not, but the key issue for us is that uh, for now, is that uh, including that aspect, but the most important one is that when we investigate, we start from there on a level member. How did you get to the system? And also what transpired when, when you were part of the system, meaning that you have had a contact with us and, and, and ended up doing other things. So that's the focus of the investigation. So the, these three uh, NPOs, as I said, they are under investigation. Once that is done, then we see whether how much money can we, uh, maybe if we have to recoup money or engage further, it depends on the investigation where it's leading. But I must say that uh, our focus on these investigations is, is, is systematic in order to understand exactly how did the NPO get got into the system and what happened in the process. And then we focus on the reasons for our suspension. Um, I think the other area uh, that uh, honorable uh, member um, Karepe raised on the issue of solution. And I think in the document, we, we also indicate that we are also in, in understand, we understand that the system and the process and the appointment of the NPOs in general, even currently, is a system that does not assist in some instances ordinary people. There are problems in terms of the system, there are problems in terms of the ability to make, to make, make an impact, including the, 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 the role of some participants on the ground. It becomes a problem in terms of skills. Now, what we intend to do, and uh, that is outlined in the, that 
we agree that I think the current system has to be reviewed because it's got its own problems. But one important aspect that needs focus is the automation of the system. The system is open to manipulation because almost everything, if anything, is manual. Whether it was designed or by default, but the question, bottom line is, 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 is manual. It allows everything and anything to come, to come in and get out. Hence, we are sometimes we find problems uh, when, it comes one, when it comes to tracking, uh, the continuously tracking some of these um, uh, maladministration and also uh, allegations of corruption in the system. But we, we try our best in making sure that we, we pick up those things. And hence, our focus is on the originators or the one who also the key people who manipulate the system. So that's that's area that of full automation automation of the system. Again, introducing new systems because the current one, they are not going to serve any purpose going forward. Hence, we are trying to review our our information system. MIS working with the CETA in making sure that biometrics becomes a, not a, a solution to this problem, but most also monitoring even the biometric system itself. So that we know exactly who comes in, who works for the program, who gets out of the program. Even if, even if uh, maybe let me put it this way, that for now going forward, we, we must be able to know who are the people who are in the program? What are they doing? What are the, what are the projects on the ground? But that should not be manual. It must be auto, uh, automated, but of course, it must be monitored very uh, 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 vigorously by people. Now, the, the, uh, the issue with regard to the payment of participants, currently, as determined by the Minister of, uh, of uh, Public Works, that uh, in the manual that we have, uh, the the part participants, uh, they are they earn 97, 97 and, uh, 50 cent per day. So per month it will be 780. This matter we 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 also discuss it including it in, in, in within the context of remote That is the, what becomes important in, in, in critical is that the participants, when they come and join the system going forward because this 97, this 708 is not enough. So the intention is to, is to say, participants, when they join, they are trained so that they, they, they self-reliance on the program and self-sustainability. But also what becomes important is the exit strategy. When they come in, you must be able to say, when are you leaving the program? But not leave the program going home, but when are you going to join the other programs like agrarian, or co-ops on, 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 on suing or whatever, whatever program we are creating. So that's, 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 it, that's, it, that's, that's, that's the key thing, because currently the program people come in and they stay too long, but they, they don't, uh, they, they leave the program after two to three years, but they have still, they didn't have, or they don't have the skill that they can use in their own community. So that's what, uh, that's what uh, the, the discussion in the remodeling. So that we can deal with some of these problems so that, that that facing our people, and more especially on the on the on the amount that they earn um, on, a, on a monthly basis. Uh, so the skills become very important. Uh, the 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 issue of the agrarian um, uh, given to to NPOs, uh, some NPOs to manage, is a matter that we also we we, we discussed here. And they, this happened, um, I think, uh, um, uh, two years or one year ago, uh, I think um, last, last year, um, where three NPOs were given a responsibility to manage the agrarian uh, in some provinces, not all the provinces. But this is a matter that we, we, we are currently discussing because what becomes important now is to make sure that uh, all these projects, especially agrarian projects, they go straight to communities through co-ops. Um, and then we, the government is able to manage that. 
we are currently having a discussion with the Department of Traditional Affairs on the on, on how we can coordinate our work around this issue of agrarian. Um, and we once we finalize that process, we're able to deal with some of these challenges uh, going forward. But again, even that agrarian project, we are closely monitoring even the, the expenditure around it uh, 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 going forward so that when we finally um, work with the communities directly around agrarian, uh, we're able to, to account for, for those uh, uh, projects on the ground. The, um, let me, let me, uh, uh, Chairperson, I'm not sure whether the DG will add on the issue of the um, asset management. Um, I think uh, this matter we currently it is with it, but there are specific questions that we ask, which I think uh, maybe I will just say uh, leave those ones for for the for the um, for the for the DG. The maybe let me indicate one aspect with regard to forensics. Uh, but uh, maybe it also maybe the, the DG will add. But let me just must just indicate one aspect with regard to forensic. Um, in some investigations um, that we we look at, whether they are done some time ago in 2016 or recently, uh, now we are we as we reported that um, six officials have been suspended. We, we chair with again with your permission, maybe if if we if we now pronounce on names and the linkages, it might also compromise the finalization of this process of uh, the disciplinary uh, action and the, the that that we're currently busy with. Um, so with your with your permission and with respect, chair, uh, that that part that's the part of, of naming officials and uh, and um, and other areas in the investigation that are actually assisting in drawing the linkages uh, might might also compromise the final a picture that we wanted to have at the end of the day. However, the request that you have made is, is, is a fair request, and I am not trying to say uh, that we will not report where, where you want, it, where want us to report. Um, the, oh, the other area that, that you, you also made a request on is the issue of uh, the spreadsheet of the service providers um, that we had from the beginning to date and the experience of the service providers and, 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 and the quality of the work that they, they have done from then to date. So also that one, we, 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 we can provide that information uh, and we report to the committee when we are requested to do so. Um, thanks, Chair. Uh, let me let me end there. Maybe this will add. Uh, thank you, Ntate. The chair has been excused from the meeting. She has a, a, a commitment. She'll be back in the next time in two or three minutes. Uh, now we can allow the DG to, to wrap up on the okay. questions that have been asked. Okay, thank you uh, so much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, and maybe just to start out right at the beginning to address the question that was raised by Mam Kize around the CWP participants and why these were not, not being paid directly. So maybe it's just to start out by saying that the CWP, it's a, a community-driven uh, government program uh, and it's actually aimed at creating uh, predictable work for the people that are unemployed. But what it's done is that it, 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 it actually allows for, for the participants to be paid uh, through government, which we are doing now directly. However, it is also supposed to be making all those participants independent so that they are able to come learn skills. And once they've learned the skills, they should actually be leaving the program. However, historically, this has not happened. And it's for that reason that government has not seen these individuals to be uh, employed directly by, by, by uh, the department. 
Then the, the second question that I also thought I should uh, uh, respond to uh, specifically just relates to the, the overall uh, audit outcomes and what are the key or main things that were found in the audit. They mainly relate to governance, to internal controls, to systems and to the people element. And in, in all of these areas, we have actually specifically then started our process where we've looked at what are, in, uh, are our immediate interventions around each of them. So for instance, when it comes to the management of, of people, we are specifically looking at implementing consequence management. And if you look at the time when we actually received our final uh, forensic report to where we are now, we actually are uh, fairly swift, I believe, in terms of taking the actions that need to be taken. And bearing in mind that all the, the actions that are being taken now are also actions that specifically would follow through on all the years, you know, uh, of, um, in, in other words, it deals with all the prior years of non-implementation as per the AG recommendations. The second big uh, intervention that we need to look at then is the civil uh, recovery of amounts that have been unlawfully uh, transferred. Now, at this point, I have to just say that, yes, the chairperson points out that in uh, over the years or over the period from 2013 to, to 2019, there's been an amount of 17 billion that has been spent by the, by the state. Yes, that is absolutely true. However, these amounts are actually divided into four critical areas for the CWP program. The first one is a percentage goes to the CWP participants. The second one is that we pay project management fees and that goes to the implementing agents to be able to run the program on the ground. There's a percentage that goes for tools and materials and then there's a percentage that goes for training. Uh, and if you then look at, at this, it's over 50% of this amount that actually gets paid directly to the CWP participants. But having also then uh, said that, Chair, so if you look at where it is that we need to be recovering these funds from, we are specifically ensuring that we're recovering funds from the PM fees, one of those elements that I named, and secondly, also from the, uh, the, the tools and materials portion of it, and that is why in this year, before we actually pay any tranches over to the, uh, uh, the NPOs or to, or to the IAs, we have to make certain that whatever is due to the institution based on the recons that we did for 2018, 19 and 1920, that those are actually then recouped from uh, the NPOs. The other thing that we also needed to do was to evaluate the service level agreement and the, the, the turnaround time in terms of compliance. That's exactly where our focus has been. The service level agreement checklist, we've, we've, we've taken that and we have reviewed it and we are holding the, the NPOs to account in, the, in, in relation there too. The, the next big immediate intervention was for us to look at internal controls. In this area, uh, we are amalgamating the, the, the areas of finance because they were deemed to be separate. Secondly, we've also appointed a, a, a new uh, individual that has to look at our internal controls. Thirdly, we are also uh, at the same time ensuring that uh, we have a, a mechanism for us to actually track and trace, you know, how we're also doing against those internal controls. An internal audit per quarter as they've been auditing They've been advising, we are the areas of weakness, and we are then speaking to line management to ensure that that, that is uh, more effectively managed. The third one was that we then need to, uh, needed to make sure that we then monitor whether this indeed is uh, being undertaken in the way that it should be. So we are, in those, of all those interventions, we are at the consequence management stage, we are also at the civil recovery stage. And then the other big stage that I also needed to, 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 um, to reference was that we also need, need to ensure that we then institute uh, um, litigation or we, or we then bring in other entities like the Hawks and so on and SIU 
to ensure that uh, we actually take the necessary steps when it actually comes to the actual NPOs themselves, or as an uh, also sorry, and to also look at staff members uh, who would have then engaged themselves in in corrupt activities. Um, so, so, so that also then answers the question that was then raised by uh, um, Lady, uh, um where she was saying, how is it that we will be addressing these issues in, in the future and whether the money that has been spent demonstrates value for money. Uh, and I believe that if you look at the program, what it was intended to do, Yes, I don't believe that it's fully achieved everything that it needed, uh, that it, it actually intended to do, save for the fact that it has given participants an opportunity to earn uh, a living. It's supposed to also upskill them, which it has somewhat also done with the training fees that have also been spent. Uh, but of course, we can further investigate that value for money um, element. The other thing that a uh, question that was also asked um, uh, by uh, um, uh, our chairperson, Mayor uh, Faith uh, Motambi, um, was just the issue around the, the assets and the appointment of a service provider, because in the last meeting, the, the, audit, the, sorry, the portfolio committee were advised that we were going to bring on a, a, a service provider. Now, Chairperson, on arriving into the department, uh, yes, I was presented with a um, document that would have allowed me to have approved and signed off for a service provider to indeed come into the department to conduct the uh, asset, uh, let me call it, verification processes and so on. On looking at the, the contract, it was a three-year contract or a 36 month contract uh, valued at over 30 million. So if you look at the period for which they were then appointed to do work, it would have meant that it was the period of 1920, 2021 and 21, 22. In my view, 1920 technically had passed. If you looked at the financial situation and where the department was sitting, it would have then also implied that it would have been 10 million down the drain. The only real year that would have been justified would have been this year, which is 2020, 2021. Why the outer year would also not have been justified is simply because, um, as everyone is aware, there is a, a, a judgment that was actually made uh, where the department, uh, at least with the, 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 uh, the contracts of all the IAs would actually come to the end as at the 31st of March, 2021, which then would have meant we would have contracted a, a, an institution or a service provider to have come on a year when by then we would have also then remodeled the whole uh, CWP uh, uh, model. So in my view, it did not make uh, sense for us to have gone ahead. The 30 million was not justifiable and we then looked at other options in terms of how it is that we could manage the assets for this year in a much more cost-effective way. And some of those ways, a chairperson, I just maybe should just say that we looked at how it is that we could maybe uh, look at some existing contracts uh, and service providers that already exist in other state organs and for them to actually come and assist us with the physical verifications. We have also looked at an approach where we've gone to the, the NPOs themselves. We've said, you, ha you have to hand us your asset registers that you have now. If you don't hand it to us by a particular date, this means that you will not get any other payments from the department and so on, Chairperson. So we believe that with the approaches and the options that we have currently, that we should be able to then meet the, the, the obligations that we have around asset management for this financial year. The other question that was also then uh, raised was to do with the institutions uh, where um, the, that had conducted the, the um, uh, investigations for us. Uh, Chairperson, they, you named five institutions, but I want to just say that I'm aware of the AG's report. In fact, there were two AG's reports 
And yes, we had three uh, external uh, service providers that did uh, investigations for us. And the three that were presented today are the ones that indicate the costs that you see. From an AG perspective, yes, we do pay the AG uh, uh, an audit uh, fee, but it's, it, it's nothing as compared to what you would have to pay an external service provider when it actually comes to an external forensic audit. The other thing that I also thought I should then um, confirm, and I think Doc has confirmed that, Dr. Uh, Siswana, is that yes, we are happy to furnish uh, the reports. Uh, we are happy to furnish the reports, Chairperson, as we then also go through our process that we are undertaking uh, and as one of the immediate interventions, because we are at a stage where we also need to make certain that our case will hold but that the case will also give us the desired results and outcomes that we are actually looking for. Whether it talks to dismissal of individuals firstly, but secondly, also if we take up individuals from a criminal perspective. So the other thing that I also thought I should talk about is whether the expenditure to date on, <coughs> excuse me, the expenditure to date on the investigation costs Yes, they amount to um, uh, roughly 16 million and whether that is deemed value for money or not. Chairperson, without these investigations, the recommendations uh, that come out of these investigations, we would not be, be in a position that we are in or to be able to actually clean this program up. So I believe that the recommendations are going to assist us to clean the program. What the, the, the reports also do, they give us the right pointers on areas that we need to enforce. What it also does, it gives us pointers on the recovery of funds or money and exactly what it is that we need to do to commission those recoveries. And um, Chairperson, it also gives us pointers into the areas that we need to consider for remodeling of the, uh, uh, the entire uh, program. Uh, so, Chair, yes, we are happy to be transparent. We can provide the information um, uh, as requested, uh, but we're also asking that, you know, uh, it's just a timing issue of where we're at in terms of process, but yes, we are happy to, to be able to do that. And Chair, perhaps I can rest it there, and I wanted to say thank you to the committee. Colleagues, I hope at the end of a Davis Dam Tang, we see must be, was, was that time. Is there any one of you who has got full ups? Yes, I do, Chair Hussein. It's Hussein. Who else? Yeah, uh, Chair is the record, but it's not a follow up, it's a point of order. Just a correction. Yes, you will deal with that. Let me. You you will be the first one. Let me get follow-ups again. Seems it's only Hussein for now. Do deal with the point of order uh, and correction that you wanted to deal with. Uh, thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, mine is just to uh, call the DG into order so that she may not uh, repeat the same mistake that she did while she was uh, responding to our, our questions. Uh, she called uh, the members with their first name, which is myself and Umam Kiz, uh, Honorable uh, Kaba. So it's just a correction that in future, when we are in this platform, we may not be in the same age, we may not be a peers, but when you are addressing members in this platform, you call them honorable members, not uh, call them by their first name. Uh, thank you, Chair. Okay, we'll send the list of the honorable members to the DG so that I think it has been long that she has been in the department. By now she must know the same names of the honorable members. Okay, the order is sustained. Honorable uh, Usain. Yeah, uh, Chair, I'm encouraged by the uh, closing comments from the DG when she says we are happy to be transparent. 
but I'm afraid that the comment from uh, uh, Dr. Shaswana does not uh, does not match that commitment because we know of many uh, municipal managers, for example, who have been suspended. We know who they are. Their names are in the newspaper. And none of those investigations where they were suspended have been compromised in any way whatsoever by releasing their names. So I don't understand the argument that Dr. Shaswana makes when he says that you don't want to compromise the investigation by revealing the names. That to me doesn't make sense. So maybe he must just tell us how does he see it and why would the, the investigation be compromised by revealing the names. I, I, I mean, I've been involved also, many of us have been involved in, in disciplinary hearings and uh, revealing the name of the individual, I'm, I'm not sure how it, uh, uh, it comp compromises the investigation. So if he can please explain that part. Uh, perhaps there's a good reason for it, but uh, I, I didn't get it from him. Then the second thing, Chairperson, I hear the commitment from the DG when she talks about criminal uh, offences, bringing in the Hawks and uh, SIU and so on, which is encouraging. But I question why it hasn't been done already. You've recovered money from people and you, you've said that people have benefited unlawfully from it. And that's why you've recovered it. Why haven't they not been reported to the police yet? How many criminal cases have, has the department opened under your watch? And why have you not done it as yet? What are we waiting for? These people have, will, will disappear from the country like all oh, the Guptas ran away. Go and chase them and put them in jail. There's no time to wait. I mean, for, for what are we waiting for? You know that they've stolen money. And you're waiting for what? I don't understand. So please, DG, can you tell us how many people have there been criminal charges opened against already? You've got all this forensic reports. You spent 18, 16 million rand on it. You've, you've given the justification for why you spent the money. Now you know who the crooks are. You know where they are but they are still not in jail. And you must be held accountable for it. So can you give an answer for us, please? Thank you, Chair. Thank you. For the three financial years that the DG has said you have prepared yourself for, to this presentation. On that, you, I have the new uh, irregular footless wasteful and unauthorized expenditure. Are you able to do the breakdown and attach an official's name to that and be able to tell us what are the consequence management that you have taken as a department in relation to those officials? Because this issue to say people's names cannot be revealed. How did you conclude those investigations? Because in a normal personal environment, when you conduct an investigation, all relevant affected people, they get consulted by the investigators, and they know that we are subject matters of this investigation. So that's why maybe one wanted, because I didn't hear that question being properly answered. To say out of those five investigations, vis-a-vis -vis the 16 million that was spent to, there are names of officials there that have been fingered in all these five reports to name and shame them, they are within the employee of the department. Same thing with the, those NPOs. These are the NPOs that you've been paying, who are fingered there to be paying ghost, uh, ghost uh, workers, for instance. Why, what is the snag of you not, because when you come to this meeting, these are the issues that you knew that the committee was going to ask you. And this is the information that is within your fingertips, because I believe where you are seated, you've got all the five reports at your disposal. We are able to pick up what is in those reports and share it with the members. That's the transparency that you wanted. There's nothing worse with you from doing that from a parliamentary, from, 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 to do that to a parliamentary portfolio committee. We have dealt with these matters. We have dealt with these matters in municipalities, in, in departments, when people's, people are mentioned. Isn't that that won't change the content of the report? It's there in the report. Unless if you tell us all these five reports have been challenged, and we've never heard that except that there's no willpower and you need we need to put it to you dg to implement those reports unless you prove it to us to the contrary because i want you to also do the breakdown so report one it was commissioned this year and this is the status of the implement that's what we don't see throughout your presentation report two it was commissioned when this is what we are doing this is the clarity that we want to get from yourselves 
Over to you, NG. DG, sorry. DG. DG Williamson, unmute your microphone and respond to the questions as raised. Okay, uh, apologies, Chairperson. I, I was muted and I was talking to myself. Uh, so apologies for that. Uh, uh, person, just perhaps on your first point uh, with regards to the names of the individuals, uh, I believe we will do that in due course, because it's, as I said, it's just a timing issue. We just need to issue the charges. Uh, we are at that issuing charges, Chairperson. Um, just with regards to the, the, the issues of irregular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure, uh, yes, Chairperson, we are in a, in a position to be able to, to uh, quantify some of the elements uh, based on the reports that we have received to date. And those are the amounts that also will be cited uh, as part of the whole disciplinary uh, proceeding. Uh, and likewise, we do also have the names of each of the NPOs, Chairperson, that uh, would, let me call it, be implicated uh, or, or who are alleged uh, in, in, in all of the uh, investigations that we have received. So we do have all of a chair. Uh, as we were saying, it's just a a timing issue uh, and we need to just finish this one leg before we proceed to the next one. Uh, I know that uh, even myself, to be honest, Chairperson, I've been a bit impatient in wanting to, to follow through and wrap up as much as we, we can, uh, but I think it's important that we do follow a structured due process so that we can have the optimal result that we are we all looking forward to, to, to having. Um, Chairperson, I missed your last point, uh, but I think uh, I've generally covered uh, the, the two comments that were made by both the Honorable Chairperson and the Honorable Hussein. And I also wanted to say, Chair, I, I do note uh, Honorable um, Direko, and I'll make sure that I do reference everyone correctly. Thank you so much, Chair. Chair. Kalipi. Uh, you will forgive me, Chairperson, because I have a network problem and I'm on the road. I don't know if you colleagues also have mentioned the issue of uh, NPOs and NGOs. Stop there and raise it. Because you better find a better network and stop a bit before. Can you try again? Kalipi? No, we can't hear you. I'm battling to hear you. We need to Kalipi? focus and zoom in on that one. Uh, as the chair was correct to say, we need the list of those officials who are implicated with the OGO's chairperson. The third point is that. Yes. Mkalipi? Mkalipi? Try again, Chair. Honorable Mkalipi? Chairperson? Yeah, it's network, Chair. Stop there. Stop. Where are you? We can hear you now. No, I was saying that we also need the list of the NPOs, drug NGOs, Chairperson, as our main focus as well. As, as much as we need the list of the officials who are implicated, but we also need the list of the NPOs, Chair. Okay. It's fine. Okay. I, I actually think we have exhausted this, unless if there's something that colleagues want to raise for now. But I know it's given, it's based on the limitation of the information that we have been given. 
that then our major contents remains not answered. And if we are to be asked all of us, uh, what oversight are we doing uh, as a committee? I don't think we'll be, a pro we'll be proud to say that. And before I maybe make my closing remarks, uh, there was a question on the assets. That question, DG, you didn't respond to it. I was checking with Honorable the record that maybe you responded to it at the time I asked you to vote the vote for me. You didn't, like I've indicated, in February, DG Chamber Force told us that they've appointed the service provider to deal with the issue of assets. And then it's on record that when you came in as an accounting officer, you stopped that thing. And the issue of asset has been a major issue throughout when you look at the audit outcomes. They were talking about assets that cannot be accounted for. And I ask you a very direct question. Did you think that was a good uh, decision that you've taken? And if yes, what would the basis for you doing that? And then maybe tell us what is the status of the assets? Do you know the value of the assets that are lingering in communities that are not being accounted for? I didn't hear responding to that question. Maybe you can assist us to answer that one, then we can be able to start to propose a way forward in the matters. Sure. Uh, okay, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, perhaps maybe just to say, Chairperson, yes, I, I had responded to it, but I'm happy to, to go through it just quickly again. Uh, Chairperson, on arriving into the department, yes, there was a service provider that was presented to me for sign-off on uh, in the department with asset verification and so on. Uh, the value of that contract was just over 30 million. Uh, and it was a, a three-year contract starting in 1920, 2021, 2022, which then would have meant that um, the asset verification for the uh, financial year of 2019-20 um, would have then been undertaken uh, for an outcome of the previous, uh, uh, well, the previous financial year. And in my view, uh, based on where we were at as a department, the year had already passed. Uh, and uh, uh, to me, it would have been deemed wasteful for us to then have spent 10 million uh, on a process which would have not even had the result that we were, would have wanted to look for. And then over and above that, we were in lockdown. So we knew anyway that no physical verifications could have been undertaken for assets for, the, for that period. The second... Uh, 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 reason chairperson is if you look at the outer year, the third year, as chairperson is aware, the contracts of all NPOs comes to an end on the 31st of March 2021. Uh, and this contract would have exceeded that timeline, chairperson, uh, which then would have meant that uh, it would not have made sense for us to have gone ahead with the third year. Uh, and in my view, the only year that could have been valid would have been this year, which would be the 2021 year. Uh, and of course, we then engaged National Treasury on the number of options that we could have had just around this particular year. So we have come up with some options around how it is that we will deal with the assets for this year, uh, Chairperson, and we are convinced that we could get the job done at a far lower cost uh, than what I would have signed off for the three-year period. And over and above that, Chairperson, uh, we are comfortable that by the time this year does end, that we would have, uh, or by the time the current contracts come to an end of the NPOs, we would be in a position to have uh, done the asset verification uh, optimally, Chairperson. Uh, and then uh, Chairperson also wanted to, me to, to confirm whether I knew the value of the assets. Chairperson, maybe just so that you are aware, on arriving, I was informed that the value of the assets is 500 million. But when you look at it against the list that we had, that is not the value. And as part of the whole verification process, Chairperson, uh, we are in the process of verifying the actual um, value of those assets, Chairperson. Uh, so you're that's, saying I think, when, just, you're saying the value of the asset you have been formed is 500 million. 
vis a vis the value that's not attained. What is the actual value according to this? And then the contract that you said you were supposed to be signed off, was it not signed, was it not a signed off by the then DG before you came in? Was it a new contract that was brought to you because DGG foresees on record saying that they've already approved this? Was a new contract brought to you or is a, is the other one that you're talking about? And then on this matter again, okay. what was Treasury's response? Did you consult Treasury on this matter? Because that has been also the matter for concern. What was Treasury's response to that effect on this matter? Okay, so chairperson, it, um, the contract itself would have been a new contract uh, because I have a view that a sale is not a sale until the cash is in the bank, which then means that we had not written to the service provider to actually confirm the appointment. So the initial SEM processes, yes, were indeed undertaken, but when it came to the, the end, uh, when I arrived, it was at a point where I would have then needed to have signed the appointment letter for for the uh, service provider, which I did not sign. And yes, I did consult with Treasury uh, and their response to me was that we could not uh, review the period of that contract. So in essence, the contract was valid. You couldn't do that. And then what is the status quo now? Because you, sorry, had the, you had a different view against what Treasury proposed. That's why I say, was it a good decision on your part as an accounting officer? I believe, Chairperson, if you look for look at value for money based on the service that would have been rendered, I believe it is a good decision, Chairperson. Uh, there was a tantrum, is, is it an old end or a new one? I see your hand has been consistently up. Colleagues, I should think upon us receiving the information as requested, as requested. And then I should think this issue of the asset verification DG, you will have to maybe share with the committee this contract that was not signed off and the one that was signed off by DDG 4C so that we can take over further this matter. And I think we'll have to invite Treasury to that effect because this is a matter that is an area of concern for all of us. Uh, and then I think, uh, I think as you are saying, you, you will be able to provide this evidence of this asset management as you you're putting it, plus the other information on the implicated officials, implicated service providers. This is the matter that as and when we, we progress, we must schedule a meeting next week. Because to us, this is incomplete information that we'd like to pursue prior to us ending this financial year so that we are this term, so that we know what we're going to be dealing with. And then we also be dealing with your annual report. Maybe we can utilize that day when we'll be dealing with our annual report so that all this information is requested by members. On my part, I would like to have a treasurer's comment on this matter of asset management and the contract that you're saying is an old one and the new one. It means then, if I heard you clearly, there were two contracts. The one that was signed by the then DG, acting DG, Mr. Chamber Fossey, and the one that was submitted to you, one will then have to extrapolate the actual difference that the DG is referring to, then so that we understand what is what. I think it's a matter of evidence and treasury. We can ask them to also come and comment on that one. I should think that's why we had a long day, colleagues, unless if there's any one of you who got some pressing matters that will make us not to conclude this meeting now. It's part of our weekends. Is there any other thing that, did I cover you members how we should move forward on these matters? Yes, Jay. Yeah. Yes, Jay.
Cava. You covered, you covered. There is a time time we... No, I'm, I'm, I'm covered. Yes, sir, yeah, we covered. Yes, sir, we covered. Cool. You are all covered. Yeah, this is a matter that's of interest of only for the, the, the department being qualified, receiving this claim audit opinion, and we must clear it during our term as members of parliament. So it's our priority number one because this is a project that is supposed to be changing the lives of the people, especially the rural poor. But what you see is malfeasance and a lot of things that is coming across that you just need to get to the bottom of it. And the lack of appetite on the part of the department to deal with those that are affected, I think that's a matter for another day. But I think that's our observation as a committee. This is the matter then when we deal with the annual report by then, can you finish all the information to the committee secretary by today's Friday? end of business on Monday, because this is all information that is within your, your disposal. So that when we, we reconvene dealing with the annual report, maybe we will find space and then the community secretary will also assist how do we take the matter forward to further probe the matter, having received all the relevant information, DG. With this, then I want to conclude this yeah. meeting. It has been a very long meeting, but at least we have dealt with very two serious matters that of concern the issue of the initiations and this one. It's a thorn to everyone. We want to appreciate all of you having taken your time. I know we are just started to become counterproductive, especially our traditional leaders. We want to thank you, all of you who are still here with us. It has been a very long day including commissioners, they are still here, some of them. So chairperson and deputy chair, including all the traditional leaders in our midst, I should think today we'll earn our salaries, all of us. <laughs> Let's call it a day. Enjoy your weekend. <laughs> let, yeah, let, thank you, Sean. Let's call it a day. Eh? Hey, Chair, my WhatsApp is not working, guys. Hey, don't WhatsApp me. Hey, hey, does it include yeah. our assignments as to host? Yeah, to host. Yeah. 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 You're talking about yeah. salaries. Yeah. You're talking about salaries. Does that include our assignments as to hosting? No, 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 no. The hosting salaries must be equal across the board. <laughs> Some, some getting, some not getting. It's a debate about the Buddhist. The Vesica is bringing another uh -huh. matter. The DG is here. <laughs> DG is here. Are you here? DG is here. You're 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 Ah, Rosh <laughs> 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 Of the house calling Kosi Matlangutu to order. I shame. Yeah, Bonga Commissioner, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. How do you pronounce your surname? Teach me now. Yamzashe. Yamzashe. Chamsa. Yeah, let's start with the wrong way of saying it, then slowly wow. get it right. No, no, get it right. Ne? Yeah, but the shortcut is also Madlamin. Oh, Madlamin. Oh. Yeah, oh, today you had called to be Madlamin. Madlamin is in the house. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Ah, it's migration. <laughs> <laughs>
Enjoy your weekend, colleagues. Thank you, thank Bye. you. Enjoy thank too, you. Chair. Thank you. Yes, it has been a long week, eh? I will yeah, call you, you, Chair. There is something thank that I have told you privately, ne? Okay, it's fine. Yeah, Let's I'll, close I'll the you. meeting. Okay.